what are the things that we can do to fix problems with our sleep? So we would be looking, one of the things you can do is directly look at what component of sleep is struggling, so to speak. I mean, if we're not getting enough sleep, then we look at improving something called your sleep opportunities. This was something that I had found out completely by accident. I originally had gotten a Fitbit back five, six years ago when I was pregnant and I had used it at that time to figure out how many steps I was taking, but I didn't realize that when you're really pregnant, it's hard to take a lot of steps. And so I ended up figuring out what else that device was capable of and it monitored my sleep. And I was one of those people that was like, I go to bed at 11, I wake up at six, that is seven hours, that is enough. But this device started showing me I was getting like five hours and 45 minutes of sleep. And I was like, what is going on? And what I didn't realize at that time, one of the things that I do with my business is I look at the data from the aura ring for my clients. So I have seen data from hundreds of entrepreneurs at this point. And the average entrepreneur spends about an hour to an hour and a half of the time that they think that they're sleeping awake because it takes time for our brain to fall asleep. There's the times that we're woken up in the middle of the night. There's the times we wake up to use the washroom and the times where our brain is coming out of sleep in the morning. If the first thing you're like, I just don't think I'm getting enough sleep, but you look at the clock and you do the math and it's seven hours. But if we're just the average person, we're now sitting at six and we can start to see where over time that sleep deprivation accumulates. So the first thing I would ask is, okay, can we allow ourselves a little more opportunity to have that sleep? So that's where I would come at. That's the very first thing. But then I guess we can discuss some things in terms of like actually looking at deep and REM sleep. How, what do you think about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So there's a couple things that are very potent uh, sources of information to our brain that we don't think about. And light is one of them. So we have this clock, our 24 hour clock that runs in our body, and it's called a circadian rhythm. Now, there are a ton of body systems that run by this clock. Like we have our heart rate increase at certain times of the day and our temperature at certain times of the day, hormones, it all functions very beautifully. Now, the only issue is, is when we are feeding our brain information that directly tells us that it's the middle of the day when we want to go to sleep, that's a problem. So if you think about like going outside in the middle of the afternoon, the light is bright, it is white. But when we want to go to bed, we want that light to be red and dim. Now, the problem is, is we spend a lot of times looking at our computers, looking at our phones, looking at our TVs. Now, this is feeding our brain information that it is daytime. And so we don't get that sleep supportive uh, rise in melatonin, the hormone, the drop in heart rate, the drop in temperature. So it can throw off our ability to get good quality sleep. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to create what I call an indoor sunset because pre-electricity, that's what used to tell our brain, hey, it's bedtime, we should start winding down. So I like to think about this, three simple changes. Can we turn off overhead lights within two, three hours of bed and turn on low table lamps? So either put the lights on dimmers or put on low wattage table lamps. And then can we switch it to orange and red hued, hued bulbs at night instead of the bright fluorescent lights? So think about the light gets low, it gets dim and it gets reds and oranges just like what would happen with the sunset. And that information directly tells our brain prep for sleep so that we can have good quality sleep. So that's definitely the one of the big things that I would make a change on. What are, are there other things that you can do like drinking a tea or not having a snack after a certain time or having a snack within a certain time? Do those things affect the sleep, quality of sleep? Yeah, great question. So as far as we talk about teas, if you were to take a decaf green tea in the hours before bed. It has something in it called L-theanine, which lowers blood pressure. It calms anxiety. It's a wonderful way to ease into sleep. And then chamomile is another type of tea. And it has something in it called apigenin, which has very similar calming effects. Now, these are great alternatives as long as they don't cause you to be waking up in the middle of the night to use the washroom. So you're going to want to make sure that they're spaced out appropriately from bed. Now, the food point that you mentioned is the most interesting. So I find that this is a huge shift in sleep quality that we can make. And in generally, I recommend to finish food at least three hours before bed. And the reason for that is if you want your brain to be fully restored and rejuvenated going into sleep, you need your heart rate to drop to allow that to happen. But if we eat our, our blood pressure has to go up. Our heart rate goes up. Everything has to go into digestion. And what happens is it delays the amount of time we get to spend sleeping in recovery because we're digesting. So if right now you're in that situation where you're like, I'm eating like 20 minutes before bed, I would experiment with moving it back by 30 minutes or an hour a week and start to see. And I find most of my clients experience that sweet spot at three to four hours out from sleep, if you remove food, the quality of sleep is better. There are reduced number of wake-ups. It is just a much more cohesive sleep. 